to storm them by force and to obtain weapons and ammunition. Rather, facts affirm that greater numbers of the people were killed as the rebels formed the armed militias and they began to head west to attack even more safe Libyan cities. The number of casualties in a single attack and retreat which NATO stirred up exceeded the number of victims who fell in the storming of all military camps in the beginning of the event, and any fact-finding mission could prove this. As soon as the war that is inflamed by sedition and aggravated by the West erupted, Western governments began looking into their victims and human rights organization did not show interest in tallying victims of this war, and the number of warmongers exceeded those of that calling for peace and calling for an end to the bloodshed. Among the news that aggravated the international and domestic opinion was the justification of the issuance of the United Nations Security Council Resolution 1970, was the bombardment of residential districts in Tripoli by planes, districts such as Fashloum, Sugil Juma and Al Jumhuriya Street Center of Tripoli, and in spite of the rapid refu refutations of the part of the Libyan foreign affairs of such report, as well as the account of residents of the district during interviews on Libyan television, by international media continued to propagate the false reports, and the great surprise was the member of the Security Council believed the false reports, and passed a risky resolution based on this without verifying it through the norms of such cases, such as the formation of an impartial fact-finding mission. As soon as the international news agencies arrived in Libya, they discovered that these reports were baseless and governments of powerful nations began to retreat from propagating the allegations. The decision has already been taken and applied. The rebels wage a racial campaign through the bias satellite channel instigating against the people of Libya and Africa of the dark skin under the pretext of African mercenaries fighting alongside Libyan armed forces. The accusation which resembled the accusations of weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. And not a single mercenary was shown on the cameras of such channels, despite allegations made concerning the capture of mercenaries. Rather what happened was the opposite. This is one of the soldiers that lived in the city of El Ajilat, 80 kilometers west of Tripoli. His name was Hisham Ashushan who appeared on Al Jazeera satellite channels being presented as a mercenary who was treated without any mercy. He was hanged on a bridge in public place in the city of El Baida, 200 kilometers east of Benghazi. And in spite of an interview with his family, the world continued to turn a blind eye. Rebels' accusation did not stop at accusing dark-skinned Libyans of being mercenaries. Rather, they accused citizens of the other African nations the number of Africans in Libya prior to the crisis has reached more than one million, and this is by the testimony of Africans who migrated from Libya to Egypt. They were being captured in Benghazi and Al-Baida to force them to wear Libyan military uniform and confess they were mercenaries. The false media reports and international resolutions starved and terrified 82% of the Libyan population and the devastating NATO bombardment as if the percentage of the population were Libyans to whom human rights does not apply. In spite of taking to the streets in the thousands on a daily basis against the bombardment, protesters failed to convince they were of the mankind and feel pain when a victim falls just as others do. Cities that were no longer under the control of the state spiraled into chaos. Rifles and tanks began a common scene in the main streets and the absence of security apparatus and with the release of prisoners crime spread, such as violations, killing, kidnapping, rape, the execution of detainees and armed rebels committed crimes against humanity. In the square of the city of Masrata, 200 kilometers east of Tripoli, after controlling the city, rebels committed heinous crimes by cutting the limbs of a soldier. They cut off his heart and trampled it. In Benghazi, east of Libya, the situation was not better. Rebels committed cold-blooded crimes. A war prisoner was cut in pieces, and among the heinous crimes which were carried out in the public square was opposite to the Benghazi court, the seat of the Transitional National Council. These images document the execution of a Libyan soldiers after being tortured and decapitated by the sword 
All of this is beginning to carry it out in the building next to the court, where the information indicated that the basement of the building was being used as a prison, a place for interrogation and torture until death. The city of al 200 kilometers east of Benghazi, was not spared from such crimes against humanity, which included the execution of and the capture of Libyan soldiers. Following an oral interrogation for a few minutes, the execution was Al-Qaeda style. Despite the spread of the such images on the internet, not a single satellite channel which propagated the fabrication aired the crimes. Rebels are continuing to commit more crimes and not a single con condemning voice by the right organization was raised, which one finds strange. Researchers looking into the crisis and causes realize that Libya as the rest of the Arab and Islamic nation has suffered from the emergence of extremist group and waged a fierce war against which reached the climax in the 1990s and the matter ended up by crushing activities of such groups. However, it seems that the sleeper cells were present. Libyan authorities were not only confined to resolving the matter through security measures, an initiative by Gaddafi charity organization commenced dialogue with the leaders of these groups, whether it was those that were captured or those that returned from Afghanistan, Iraq or Guantanamo. The dialogue resulted in the declaration by the leadership of the combatant Islamic group to refute violence once and for all. In a significant intellectual book known as The Intellectual Reference, and for the course of the last two years, 705 members of the group were released in three groups. The last group, consisting 105 members, were released on the 15th of February 2011, coinciding with the beginning of the event. However, have they really refuted violence? The semblance of and the rituals and appearance alone did not indicate the presence of extremists among the ranks of the armed rebels. In addition to the method of fighting execution on a mass scale, were carried out under religious slogans characterized by Al-Qaeda. Also religious dialogue which was adopted while instigating killing during attacks against cities resembled the approach. However, the images is more apparent when these groups established their control over some cities. Abdel Hakim Al-Hassadi, leader of the combatant Islamic group, declared himself Amir of the city of Darna, 300 kilometers east of Benghazi. He, he was assisted by Qumu, who returned from Afghanistan and a former Guantanamo detainee. This information was released in various Western intelligences. In addition to reports in an American and European newspapers, they interviewed the leadership and disclosed training camps supervised Al-Hassadi and Qumu. Islamic Al-Maghrib Al-Qaeda did not conceal its mourning of its members when NATO forces mistakenly bombarded rebels west of Ejdabia. Also, leaders of Al-Qaeda, Ab Abu Yahya Libi, appeared on the internet instigating Al-Qaeda members in Libya to fight and advising them to gather large quantities of weapons and to take advantage of the golden opportunity due to the security situation in Libya. Ayman al-Zawahiri appeared in a recording urging his followers in Libya to fight the Libyan army and NATO. In the field, battle in the city of al Brega in the beginning of April 2011 witnessed the fall of extreme li Libyan leader Abdel Latif at who returned from Afghanistan and who disappeared in the past years. He was believed to be in Darfur region in Sudan. However, he appeared as a field commander in the ranks of armed rebels during the attack in central and western cities in Libya. He died in Al Brega, 240 kilometers west of Benghazi. His funeral was held in Benghazi and was attended by several members of the Transitional National Council, including the spokesperson of the council, Abdel Hafid Roga. Information indicated that Islamic Maghreb Al Qaeda and other extremists operating training camps in Benghazi, in addition to other cities and mountainous areas east of Libya. Many countries of the world have now internal wars and armed conflicts, but without the interference of the world or regional or international organization in this manner, to which the Libyan crisis was handled. For the first time, organizations and nations to take position based on media reports that were not characterized and exaggeration. 
Most hazardous was the United Nations Security Council Resolutions 1970 and 1973, which were regarded as a grave international precedent. The immense media campaign spread fear within Libya, perhaps most notably the involvement of the governments of powerful nation, such as the British Foreign Minister, in a deliberate fabrication when he announced that leader Muammar al-Gaddafi left Libya, a matter that terrified Libyan ambassadors and representatives to other nations and international organizations, and made them take position against their country. Despite the fact that Libya accepted Resolution 1970 and 1973, that were based on unconfirmed media reports, and which were passed in violation of norms while passing such resolutions, the coalition and NATO, which was entrusted with applying the no-fly zone, did not commit to the text of the resolution. Rather, they have taken them as an excuse to carry out wide-scale aggression and to accomplish military and political objectives that de contradict the United Nations Charter, such as the starvation of the people and destruction of the infrastructure, perhaps NATO's bombing of the leader Muammar al-Gaddafi's office in his workplace in Bab al-Aziziyah on the 24th of April 2011, in an attempt to assassinate him, is an obvious indication that NATO disparaged the international law a matter that calls for an urgent intervention by the United Nations Secretary General and the permanent members of the Security Council to end the bombardment and to investigate the serious incident and to bring those responsible to trial.